All right, this is it. Ace tier heroes and contraptions. The patch. Ready, guys? You guys have already read this, so it's not actually hype for you. All right, contraptions. Contraptions are placeable items. Contraptions, when on the board, behave like regular units. You can drag them around, and they affect gameplay in combat. Contraptions do not count against the unit cap. That's interesting. I guess we'll we'll actually see what they are later. Aces. Tier 5 units are now called aces. Each is the capstone of its associated alliance. Each ace unit, in addition to its regular abilities, offers a new ace effect that is enabled when you have at least one level of its associated alliance. Okay. When at least one level of that alliance is enabled, when an ace unit appears in the shop, the odds of it being the ace unit associated with that alliance is increased by 15%. So basically, it's the same thing as legendaries, but they're synergy based, which I think is really good. Like, I think this is a good change for the game. I think the biggest problem with legendaries for the longest time is they weren't synergy based. And I think that I like that you're more likely to find the ones that hit the synergies you're looking for. That makes a lot of sense. We'll have to see exactly how they implement it, because there could be stuff that needs tweaks, we'll see. But I think this is the biggest thing. The problem with legendaries for so long, and this is like where good, st good stuff meta comes from, it's a big design problem that the legendaries were just not really high synergy cards, right? So, for example, stuff like Medusa and Troll, like obviously they have alliances, but they have weak alliances, right? Like Scaled is powerful, but you only want to pair it, right? So you pair Medusa Tidehunter, they're both teamfighter, they're both Scaled, and then you just like run a bunch of things all the way down, right? You don't actually play, you know, th there's no like Knight and, you know, uh, legendaries, right? There's nothing that you actually want to play for ice synergies. There's Lich, um, if you want to be on like six mages or something, but most most of the legendaries had weak alliances. Now they're incentivizing you more so to fit them into actual synergies, I guess. And I guess we'll have to see what the actual changes are down there. These are the two biggest changes, but it looks like if we're just going down, we're not going to see that yet. The improvements to the friend UI. Nobody cares, remove da 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 UI. You can see the next level's odds of finding a particular hero. Sure, unit status panel, no she's correct armor values during combat. Cool. Speculative fix for anti-mage sometimes not doing <laughs> speculative fix. Improvements to AI pathing. Oh, oh, the pathing, thank God. Okay, Bloodseeker. Alliance changed from human assassin to human dead eye assassin. Bloodseeker is now a dead eye. So this, is really interesting. So in the early game, you can run like Bloodseeker plus Sniper, and Bloodseeker will attack the weakest health unit and just like go off. That's a that's a potentially big upgrade. It is. Maybe something like Scrappy's Assassins makes more sense. Like level three bounty hunter in Scrappy's, if you get the gyrocopter later anyway, it's like you use bounty hunter plus sniper in the early game. And then at the late game, you get out of Sniper and get into Gyro, because you only want to be in four Scrappies anyway. You know, Scrappy Assassins, there, there's some links there. It ends up making some sense. Or you can just run, like, normal... I don't know. It's interesting. I, I suspect... I suspect it's not going to be the biggest deal. I suspect Bloodseeker's still going to be kind of bad. But, you know... Maybe not. Maybe not. He would keep changing targets and wander around. Yeah, that's the one interesting thing about this. The other two Deadeyes are ranged, right? And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the way Deadeye works is you do have the ability to change attacks if between attacks another new lower health unit gets lower. And now that Bloodseeker is here and he's melee, that's actually kind of awkward for it. Because in theory, unless they made him actually stick on targets, then Bloodseeker might literally just run back and forth, which is kind of bad. But he's a fast runner. So maybe it's actually okay. Because he does want to be on something that's attacking. That's something that's lower health. I'll definitely have to try Bloodseeker 2 and Sniper 2 early. You know? I mean, if you find something like a helm for a Bloodseeker 2 star, find a sniper for it. Sounds good. Why the hell not? Bounty Hunter. Oh, the bounty buff we were all waiting for. Plus 5 attack damage. Plus 10 attack damage on the minimum. That's an average of plus 7.5 attack damage that is one fourth of a claymore you are getting for free garbage unit disruptor 
Draft tier change from four to ace. Ah, oh, so they make they're making disruptor a legendary. Draft tier change from four to ace for the Warlock Alliance. Alliance has changed from Brawny Shaman Warlock to Brawny Warlock, so now there's only three shamans in the game. Maximum health up 200. So now Disruptor level 1 is kind of like more so something you can have in a front line at 900 health. Before it's like you needed to 2 star him. 700 was just a little bit too low. But now 900, it's getting to the point where you can maybe front line a level 1 Disruptor. Uh, we'll see. Attack damage minimum. Oh, oh. Up by 9 and 10. That's an increase of 9.5 damage per attack. Disruptor hits like a truck. Ace effect. The effect of the Warlock Alliance is now applied to two units in addition to the Warlock itself rather than one unit. Which means you're getting 50% more lifesteal. So you would think that, in theory, this is a 50% increase on the power of Warlocks. And I think it's quite a bit more than that, right? Because it'll link to the two lowest health units... And the link to the Warlock itself was usually less important than the link to the other unit. So I think it's about twice as strong, instead of more like a 50% increase. That's a pretty big deal, by the way. They're trying to make Disruptor like less of an auto-include, because... It's a legendary now, but... I mean, giving it this ace effect, I think... I mean... This is pretty insane. <laughs> this is pretty good. Okay, Enigma. Ace for the Shaman Alliance. Ace effect extends the effects of the Shaman Alliance to your entire army. <laughs> what the fuck? So there's only three shamans in the game now, right? It's Enigma. Uh, Deceptor's not a shaman, which is a big nerf to shamans. So now it's just Enigma, Shadow Shaman, and Arc Warden. And this is a big deal. Because before, the reason shamans were good was because you kind of only had to run one bad shaman. Now, you have to run two. You have to run Enigma and Shadow Shaman? You only need two Shamans now? No, never mind. Hmm. Guys, okay, we'll, we'll get to that later. You guys are allowed to spoil me for stuff that's relevant to what I'm saying. Because I don't want to talk like a fool. This is interesting though. So you only need the Alliance pair. Arc Warden's still very good. So Shamans are still decent. If you get... So if you just get Arc Warden and Enigma... Your entire team just has a 1 in 6 chance to chicken any attacker? Dude, what the fuck? Really? That's it? That's all you need? It's 10% now? Okay. But, still. Uh, huh. Okay, interesting. I mean, Arc Warden's still kind of auto included as far as I've seen, so... You kind of only need the Enigma for this. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Gyro Chopter. Ace for the Deadeye Alliance. Grants Deadeye units two strike, which means they cannot miss. Which is pretty shit. Obviously, like, you can look at that and you can be like, wow, I can counter the elusives. I, the biggest thing is you go through Disruptor's Static Cloud. I mean, what other mischances are there even? Ricky's not in the game. It's just like the, the Static Cloud and the elusives, right? Am I forgetting one thing because that's a pretty weak ace effect like compared to the other two vanguard does vanguard have a mischance now what the heck wait <laughs> wait a second the birds oh right you'll have the easiest round 25 creep round of your life with this ace effect okay lich ace for the mage alliance your army's mana generation from attacks is increased by 10% per mage alliance level. That sounds pretty weak. It's just... Okay, it's not on the level of, like, the Warlock one. Because 10%, most of your mana generation comes from taking damage and from Crystal Maiden. 10% per mage alliance level, which means if you're in three mages, you get one-tenth of a Void Stone. One-tenth of a Brooch of the Aggressor per attacker, which is not very good. Brooch of the Aggressor is already, like... It's okay, but one-tenth of it per attacker? Eh. Six mages? 20%? I don't think it's really that good. Don't get me wrong, Lich is still a good hero. And you still will use this, just because if you're in mages and if you find Lich, you will buy Lich, you will put it in your team, and you'll be like, oh, I guess I have 10% now. But it's not like 
it's not insane. Whereas something like the Warlock one, I mean, this will just win you fights. God, Disruptor's so broken. <laughs> Could be better than it seems, I am. I can see it being a bit better than it seems. I think it's pretty bad, though. Medusa. Ace for the Scaled Alliance. Attack range changed to three. Ooh. That's, that's a pretty big deal. That means she can no longer just, like, be uh, super backline DPS. That's quite interesting. Um... So another thing that's interesting to understand about Medusa is that with her attack range, her attack range is more important than an attack range on a normal unit actually would be. And the reason for that is because her split shot works like DK's Dragon Breath, um, but only for things that are in her attack range, right? It's the same as DK's Dragon Breath. So if we look at Medusa here, oh, look at this ace tier graphic. That's actually so cool. If we look at Medusa here, Split Shot's the same as Dragon's Breath, for, or not not the spell, the like splash, right? It's within one cell of her primary target, but only if she has the range to hit it, which means an, a reduction of her attack range literally means it's a reduction of Split Shot damage, and she will not walk forward to have that extra range. So that does actually nerf her a decent amount. Um, Ace Effect grants scaled units retaliate. Oh, I missed retaliate. When a unit with Retali is attacked, they apply a 20... 25? So it doesn't say this doesn't stack. But it, it probably wouldn't stack, right? Is this stackable? Does anybody know? 25 damage per second alliance level debuff to their attacker. I mean, old Retaliate never stacked. So per, per alliance level means if you're on 4... If you're on 4, then it's 50. Unfortunately, four scaled is just not really a thing. You just don't really do that. It's too all over the place. If you're against mages, if you have two scaled, you're usually enough to beat them. So, uh, and stone gaze radius down to three. Oh my god! Holy shit, that's so bad. Why are they nerfing this unit? Medusa's ass. What the heck? Kyrubage unit, moving on. Holy shit. <laughs> Ogre Magi will cast Bloodlust on himself first, then on allies ordered by distance. Closest first. That's interesting. Woof. So, immediately... Okay, let's break this down. Is this a nerf or is this a buff? I would say it's a buff for the early game. The important thing to understand about Ogre... We can see there's like, uh... They changed the art. The important thing to understand about Ogre is that it's if you cast an Ogre Mage on himself, the attack speed bonus is better, and you can control it. So in the early game, if you have like an Ogre two star, he'll always cast on himself at the start of the fight, and it's always strongest on himself because it goes from 90, and he's two starred. So that's good. In the late game, if you're in contract and you have like a Terror Blade you want to buff, he'll always buff himself first, but you can make it so that he's likely to buff the specific thing you want second. If he's nearby it. I like that you can control it now. I think this is just a buff, right? But his attack damage blows. It can, but in early game when he has like a warlock that's sacrificing, it looks good. It seems like a minor buff. Being able to actually control it does matter a lot. Because there's a lot of times where he'd put it on someone completely useless and that's just bad. Like, being able to actually control it is a really big deal. There's so many units where he can put this on where it's just useless. It's a contract nerf, though? How is this a contract nerf, guys? Like, the odds of him bloodlusting a DPSer are really low. He'll start the game by bloodlusting himself, so yeah, you won't get the 1 in 8 chance to bloodlust your DPSer at the start of the game. The 12.5% isn't there, sure, but you can make it so that he basically will always bloodlust what you want after 5 seconds, which is pretty good, right? Like, I would say it's about the same, but... It's probably a buff more than a nerf. I do like this change. I think it's better than being completely random. It makes positioning matter more. It's just better design. Techies, ace for the Inventor Alliance. Grants Inventor units chain reaction. If an enemy dies as a result of unstable reactor, they explode just as if they had unstable reactor. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, are you kidding? Dude, that's crazy. I mean, it's kind of hard to say how good that is. 
I can say at the very least, it's really funny. Like, I, I'm imagining the Reddit clips now. Bye bye summons, yeah. This just like this this can actually hard counter summons. I the, like I, I can imagine a Reddit clip where it's like the entire just like chain of enemy units just like all dies one after the other. I think this isn't as big of a thing as it seems. This this probably won't this I don't think this is powerful. Or at least not super powerful. It's quite weak, all things considered. It's a lot weaker than it seems anyway. But I mean, hey, if you're in four scrappies, and you're, you find attackies, you're in four inventors, this is just free value on the side. Right? <laughs> troll Warlord. Ace for the Troll Alliance. Attack rate changed from 1 to 1.3. Ooh, he's attacking slower. Woof. So Ace effect. Wait, no, that's attacking faster, right? Wait, what? Because that's not... Yeah, that's attacks per second. Yeah, he's attacking faster. He's got a 1.3 base attack time. That's that's pretty good. Ace effect. Grants your units a mini bash. While attacking, your entire team has a 5% chance per troll alliance level of stunning their target for 2. 0. 0.25 seconds. Okay. So let's assume that 4 trolls is still not too much of a thing. Let's say this is a 2 trolls. So, 5% chance, your entire team gets a 5% chance of a stun that lasts for 0.25 seconds. How useful is that? 5% for a 0.25? That's not super good. Right? I'm literally reading it in game, it's 0.77. Is it slower? It's weird, because if you're looking at the troll. Let's go to his stats. Yeah, it's 0.77. Does is the wording just kind of off? He just needs high attack speed units like Slark, etc. But it's 5% for a 250 millisecond bash? 5%? And it's a really small bash, too. Hmm. Attack rate is the inverse of base attack time. Yeah, base attack time means it takes 1.3 seconds to do an attack, right? Which means attack rate would be the inverse. So they did slow with his attack speed, right? That's what I was saying at first. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not... I think most of these ace effects are pretty fairly not super strong. I guess that's just coming from like reading the first one. Like the the uh disruptor one is insane. Having like a second lifelink. Like does this mean So when one of the things in the lifelink damages it only heals the warlock, right? It doesn't heal the other lifelinked unit. It's not like a three-way it's just like both of them have a lifelink to the warlock, right? This is so much better than any of the others, right? Like, Shaman one is probably decent just because you only need Enigma. Gyrocopter is pretty meh. Lich is pretty meh, but you'll still use it because you still use Lich when you're in mages. Medusa's pretty meh, and Medusa got really nerfed to compensate. Techies is decent, not as good as it looks, but you'll still use Techies. It's kind of like Lich, like, you'll still just use this. So it's just an upgrade to that comp, because you just want to run this unit anyway. Whereas Troll kind of got nerfed in the same way that Medusa did. Like, he's attacking a decent amount slower, and attack speed is really important on slower. Or, uh, attack speed is really important on Troll because of Fervor. But the mini bash just seems underwhelming. I think the numbers on this are just a little too low. If you have four trolls, the question is, does this make it so that four trolls is better? Uh, I mean, just looking at this, I'm not really a believer. So you'll have a 10% chance on your entire team to stun a target for just 250 milliseconds. I think this this low chance is okay if it's more than 250 milliseconds. Dota pseudo random, every no bash increases your chance to bash. I mean, Dota pseudo random. Is this game confirmed pseudo random on the RNG? And even if it is, I mean, it's. I mean, that's still 
Like, it doesn't change the overall odds, right? Anyway, moving forward, the, uh, what are these called? Contraptions. Barricade. Newly added tier 2 contraption. Has 400 health and 20 armor. Two placeable barriers to block enemies and ranged attacks. Immune to spells. So will enemies try to attack this with melee attacks? Or will they just like, is it just an obstacle for them? And does it block only your opponent's ranged attacks? Or would it block your own? I'd actually have to test this, right? Is a video on Twitter of it working? Okay, let me let me pull up the video on Twitter. You want to link it here again? More warlocks you have, more chance of finding a disruptor. You're always running four warlocks with 30% chance of finding a disruptor. Is that right? I thought that's not how I read it. Let's see. Aces. When at least one level of that alliance is enabled, when an ace unit appears in the shop, the odds of it being with that alliance is by 50%. So it's it's just it doesn't stack. It's just and when you have it at least paired. It doesn't matter if you get four of them, unless this is saying it wrong. Okay, let me pull up this video. Let me pull up this uh, contraption video. This is pretty interesting. Okay, they made like a trailer for this. All right, guys. I'll pull this up on stream for you guys. Uh... Boom. Where are we? Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, contraptions video, let's go. Wait, let me actually, I have to move this. So I introduce a it's not that. Barricade, place little barriers. So we got to like watch this in action, right? second i'm full screening this Dude, my my stream setup here is really jank also the quality on this video is like kind of bad so full screening it's probably not going to look great but it's fine why isn't it playing what the heck what okay so these are the barricades Target buddy, taunts enemies and draws fire, can't equip items. Put a bit booster on it. So it taunts nearby enemies, healing word, heals friendly units within one cell at 20 health per second. Oh, it's got the old like druid animation. That's pretty good. Tombstone, spawn zombies when an ally or enemy heroes die within its radius, right? Four contraptions. That video didn't clarify all that much, guys. I'm not gonna lie. But it was cool to see. Barricade range units is 2 OP. I think it's interesting. Range from Edge went over it. I like I like the idea of these uh, of like placeable obstacles. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, I think. Because you can, you can do a lot with them, right? I can see them removing them next big patch because no one likes them. I think, I think it's a really interesting way to play the game, right? What's not to like? It seems cool. I don't see how barricades have full magic protection, though. Yeah, we'll see. Waste an item also. Yeah, you lose an entire item. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. I'm, like, I'm down for it. I see kind of like no problem with this. I love the idea. I think it's cool in concept. There's a chance it needs some tweaking. So let's scroll back down to where we are. So Barricade has 20 armor. 20 armor is pretty insane, by the way. It will block range attacks pathing from that direction. I'm taking every contraption for like a week. Yeah, I mean, we have to try it out, right? Hmm. The barricades be rotated. I'll have to try this out. It's, it's something that I can't really comment too much on without trying it out. Target Buddy, newly added tier two contraption. This is another tier two, so there's 
there's two tier twos, a tier three, and a tier four. This one has a thousand health and ten armor, and it taunts. Being able to taunt and equip items seems fairly valuable. It's kind of like having like an axe, right? It is a little squishy. You can put like a chainmail or a vanguard on it, basically. Um, those are kind of the best things to put in it, chainmail or vanguard. It's probably not tanky enough for a blade mail to be decent. We can target buddy plus big time contracts. You can do that as well. You can have it like the sacrifice, the taunting sacrifice at the start. I think that's probably not very powerful, but it's a funny idea, I guess. Big time contract just to make it big. <laughs> Are these like one time use? No, they're, they're kind of like units that don't count towards the unit cap, basically. They're kind of like a cross between items and units. You buy it as an item in the shop and it's on the side and then you put it in as a unit, but that doesn't count towards your unit cap, which is really interesting. So in these tier twos, target buddy won't be good. Barricade seems like the ability to position certain things feels like it's actually very valuable. Like blocking ranged attacks. If you can still attack over it and they can't, that's really good. Put this in the back line to always counter assassins, target buddies. I'm not sure how valuable these are. Like the question is, can the how much better than something like a tier two item are they, right? Like, I mean target buddy, for example, is the easiest to compare. It's a thousand HP on tier two, and it has ten armor, and it taunts, and it can equip items. So like you compare this to your average tier two item, right? Let's like let's compare this to uh, mechanism. So mechanism is tier three, obviously, but it's 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 decent. It's kind of like it's a good tier two item or a bad tier three. I mean, target buddy's much better than this, right? Like mechanism, your target buddy with ten armor, it's going to be a little bit more valuable than this HP. It's basically if your mechanism hits like five heroes, it taunts. It can equip an item as well to make it even better, like a vanguard or something. Isn't like. At, at two, target buddy seems really good, right? If it's got 1,000 HP and 10 armor. Is this like the best tier two item? I mean, obviously something like Summoning Stone, Fall from Grace, Smuggler might be better, but this is really good, right? I mean, it seems really good for a tier two item. So the question is, how does Barricade compare? Two placeable barriers to block enemies and ranged attacks. It depends on like how aggro works with barricade. I need to, th this one's kind of hard to see. So wait, 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 guys, what's, is the, is the results in? How does, how does it work with barricade? Like, do enemies, will, will they ever attack it? Or do your ranged attacks go over it while theirs don't? Some interesting screenshots. Barricade your sniper into a corner. Yeah, you can barricade your arc warden into summoning in front of himself. Depending on how they work, barricades might be a very high skill cap. I would I would think so, right? You can attack over your own barricades, but opponents can't. Your ranged attack go over. But it just blocks ranged attacks. Dude, that's so good, right? Your ranged attacks go over and theirs don't? Barricade gonna be 100% nerfed. I think both of these tier 2 ones seem kind of OP. Like, Barricade and Target Buddy both seem OP, honestly. Healing Ward. 200 health. Heals friendly units within one cell. 20 HP per second. So you're just picking up a free aura. So again, I guess the, the very most direct comparison is Mechanism. This one seems kind of bad, though. I mean, Mech is like 250 health, right? So it takes like a full like 13 seconds for this to even be better than that. And it's one cell radius instead of two. This is like hyper garbage, what the hell? Like mechanism is already not that good. Again, tombstone, 2000 HP and 20 armor, holy shit. Ally and enemy heroes spawn zombies when they die within two cells of tombstone. What's, what's zombies? What's the actual stat line on zombies? Will it say later? They chain updated again. Uh, there's no there's no stat line on zombie it says here. I mean I guess a lot of this is gonna come down to how good zombies actually are. Zombies have 300 HP, 40 damage, 
5 armor and 0 0.83 attack rate. Okay, interesting. Huh. Ally and enemies here spawn zombies when they die within two cells. And the zombies are always going to be fighting for you. You could even put Tombstone on the front line. Yeah, you could. I mean, it can literally tank. It's 2,000 health and 20 armor. If they attack it, that's good for you, right? I mean, this seems pretty good, too. Like, worst case scenario, you have just like a gigantic tank that defies the unit cap, right? What the hell? It's so tanky. I know it's tier 4, obviously. It's tier 4... Uh, tier 4 is weird because it's kind of hard to pick over something like a Moonshard or a Daedalus if you need a damage item. Put it besides Arc Warden. Yeah, you can do that too. Uh, it looks like it only it only summons from heroes and not like spawned units. Because it's just allied enemy heroes. So they thought of that. I don't know. I mean, it seems like all three of them are kind of OP except for Healing Word. The fact that they defy the unit cap on your board is just kind of nuts. It really, really is. Okay, Alliance Changes. Shaman now requires two heroes to activate down from three. And it's 10% instead of 17. So they reduce it by almost 50%. <sighs> and without Disruptor being a Shaman, it's still not as committal. So the question is, how good is this on Enigma plus Arc Warden? It makes your entire team have 10% chicken rate. I mean, I think it's simple. If you're in Arc Warden, you just go Enigma, right? Makes your entire team have a 10% chance to thun them for 1.5 seconds. Like, c compare that... Just compare that to Troll, by the way. Troll with a Troll pair is 5% for 250 milliseconds. Two Shamans? It, obviously, these are on your opponent's attacks and not yours. But two Shamans is 10% doubled for 1,500 milliseconds for six times the duration so it's 12 times as effective like i mean that's pretty nuts but you need shamans online to find enigma yeah if you have the uh well you don't need it online to find it but it will increase the odds of it being enigma if you find it so you might see some people like for example put a shadow shaman on the board for a little bit with their arc warden just to increase the odds of finding the enigma That'll be pretty interesting. Patrol gives attack speed too? Yeah, sure. Obviously, it's not literally 12 times as good. But the... The, like, it, it's still not a close comparison. Like, the fact that the stun duration is only 250 milliseconds compared to 1500 is just, like, really, really low. Well, it'll be interesting to see ace tier drop rates, if things are on board or not. They haven't clarified that. It might be worth benching a Shadow Shaman and putting it on board only for rolling. Yeah. Presumably, you would do that. You would bench, like, the ace tier thing, put it on the board while you're rolling. And that would be an interesting strategy you'd see. I think you're going to have to start seeing that kind of thing more and more. How does overflowing work with odds of getting ace units? Presumably, if you're overflowing, like, multiple categories, <coughs> you'll your bonuses will kind of cancel each other out. Because it doesn't increase the odds of you getting an ace tier unit. It just, if you get an ace tier unit, having that category developed on your board increases your odds of it being that category, right? Sorry, I need water. <sighs> okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, where were we? Assassins. So they took out nine assassins, and now it's three and six. So it's 15% crit chance and 25% crit chance. So this is a pretty big deal. So before, <clears throat> three assassins was a 20% DPS increase, and six assassins was a 60% DPS increase. So it triples up. Now, three assassins is a 30% DPS increase, and six assassins is a 75% DPS increase. Dude, that's, that's pretty good. 75% DPS increase. Nine Assassins is dead. Yeah, but six Assassins is more alive than ever. I don't know. I mean, Bloodseeker is potentially a little bit buffed. Like, you could have... Maybe Bloodseeker early game can carry harder if you find a Sniper. Maybe. I don't know. This could be kind of cheeky. This actually could make some sense. Six Assassins? Do I, I... I think I might have to try this. I mean, more than ever... Like, Tidehunter is super good because it pairs scaled for free, gives you a frontline stun. 
We'll see. It depends how contested they are, but I, I do actually want to play Six Assassins. We'll try. Elusive. <clears throat> so Elusive is... They kind of did the same thing, up 5% on both. <laughs> it's not the same, though, dude. 10 to 15 and 20 to 25 compared to 20 to 25 and 45 to 50. <laughs> 45 to 50. Uh, poor Elusives. Poor, poor Elusives. Uh... This is kind of bad. However, I do think that six elusives was kind of better than nine elusives anyway. So, I do think that they end up being about the same. Yeah, elusives still aren't going anywhere. I mean, the biggest thing is just like the meta. Like elusives not only are vulnerable to spells, but they're vulnerable to stuns. Something like a tide hunter with an AOE stun. The fact that like the four cost meta is up by the way is hurting elusive so much because there's so many tide hunter level twos in this meta and now like every time there's an aoe stun like when a cask goes off or a tide hunter goes off your stunned units can't evade and that's really bad for elusive so like warlock meta like the more stuns the more you can't play these and right now the meta just doesn't seem to support them <clears throat> warrior 36 you get 20 armor 20 armor at 6 warriors. And now Doom is like decent. Dude, you could go 6 warriors, right? I think you could totally go 6 warriors. It's close. I still I still don't think it's amazing. You might be better off completing in other ways. I don't know, 6 warriors still feels hard. Even with Doom. It still feels like it's not quite going to get there. But it's something that's worth trying. It's something that I could definitely see about checking out. Okay. Unit tier odds by level. So this is the last change of the patch. They reorganized their old odds. So now at 8, we're back to... Hey, we're back to basically where we were before. So 1% on 8, 3% on 9, 6% on 10. And 10% on the, uh, the higher class with 10. Sure. I mean, with the new system, I think this probably makes sense. They're more kind of alliance-based. We'll have to try them out. Let's look at tier 4s. Still the same. They haven't changed tier 4s at all. So, to fit in the 1%, they're stealing from basically all of these a little bit evenly. So, tier 4s and tier 5s are still really good. It does seem... So, if I'm guessing the meta... I mean, 4 Warlock seems hilariously broken. I actually kind of don't understand this. Like, tier 4s, they didn't nerf any of the tier 4s in any way. So, 4 Warlock just got buffed. Disruptor being tier 5, I guess, hurts a bit. But once you get it, and it gives you that ace tier effect, it's just absolutely bonkers. It's just absolutely nuts, right? 4 Warlocks, I feel like you just kind of have to play right now. They're so good. So, the contraptions are really good. Um, what else changes off this ace tier stuff? I think Warlocks are definitely the easiest winner in Ace tier. It's time for Assassins with double Dawning of Ristol. Yeah, I mean, there you might actually see some more Dawning of Ristols now. I think four Warlocks is going to be just what people do. Like, that seems kind of crazy. Shamans are probably the most broken. Ten units with 10% each tax is so nuts. Um, I think in, like, a good stuff scenario, you can definitely do that if you find the Enigma. I mean, Arc Warden's still good, so you still run Arc Warden and stuff, and yeah. Shamans are definitely not more broken than Warlocks, though, for sure. Like, the the Warlock, the full Warlock with Disruptor having that second pair is absolutely insane. Inventors win the most fun ace tier. Inventors are probably the most fun ace tier. So, Scrappies are on the up and up. Six Assassins is something I could try. Six Warriors is something I could try. Four Warlocks, if you guys want to win games, if you want to hit, hit ladder and win games right now, just jam four Warlocks and stuff, right? It looks like they added a lot of fun things to play around with, but I think the meta is actually largely not going to change that much. Like, the meta was, like, kind of like team fight, four costs, warlocks, you know, you could run knights. It looks like knights basically didn't get changed at all. They might have gotten a bit power crept here, maybe? Um, played shamans and scrappy. These tanky heroes with chickens is silly. Yeah, I mean, the chickens are pretty good. Meta not changed, kappa. I mean, I think, okay, so when I, when I say the meta not changed, I mean, like, the basically the best way to play the game, which I think is 
probably four Warlocks before, and I think it's four Warlocks now. That being said, I, you're right. I shouldn't say the meta isn't changed. There's a lot of other things that does get changed out. Um, there's a lot of, like, fun ways to play, but I think most of the added stuff is still going to be kind of weak. Like, I still don't really like this, this troll ace thing. It's more of an incentive to try to go for trolls. I think it is a little bit weak. Anyway, that's... That's like the overall evaluation here. Let's go let's go ahead and hop into a game, guys. See see what awaits us on the other side.